This is how to set up a Raspberry Pi 4 Model B using all the latest and greatest tools. We'll also cover the different connection options, so whether you have a keyboard, monitor, and mouse, or instead intend to go headless from the terminal, or even want to connect remotely over a remote desktop, we got you covered. And at the end, I'll explain whether I think Raspberry Pis are ultimately worth it, and show you some cool projects I built out like a license plate detection system, and how I even managed to earn money mining Monero cryptocurrency on my Raspberry Pi. Now, this approach is focused on the Raspberry Pi 4 Model B, but it should work for older and adjacent models as well, such as the Pi 3 or Pi Zero. So for those coming in cold, a Raspberry Pi is a single board computer about the size of a credit card. What's amazing about it is it only costs $35. It's often touted as an accessible entry point for children to learn about programming, but it's often used by hobbyists to build out smart appliances for residential or commercial purposes. Most people have no idea, but in 2018, Raspberry Pi became the third best-selling computer of all time. Now, the market is crashing, supply chains are in shambles, Raspberry Pis are more elusive than a McRib sandwich right now, which has even led to the rise of the Raspberry Pi black markets where the going rate is 400% the retail price. Okay, technically it's not a black market, but it still feels like price gouging. But if you're watching this, then that means you got your hands on a Raspberry Pi, hopefully without having to sell a limb. And this video is gonna give you the most up-to-date method that I know of to set up your Raspberry Pi. Let's get started. And this is the anatomy of the Raspberry Pi 4. So you can see all the different ports and connection options available to you. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is take our micro SD card out of our Raspberry Pi. I'm using a 32 gigabyte card here. Now we need to be able to connect this to our computer somehow and there are different modes by which we can do that. This is a micro to SD adapter. This is a micro to USB adapter. And this is a micro to USB-C adapter. So pick your poison. I'm gonna use the uh, micro to SD. And then what I'm gonna do is throw this right into my computer because my computer has a native SD card reader. Okay, so now that the micro SD card is inserted into our computer, I'm gonna just pull open my finder window here and just verify that I can see it. It should be called boot and it should be a removable drive here. So that looks good. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is download Raspberry Pi Imager, which is how we flash the operating system to our micro SD card. So I'm gonna to go to raspberrypi.com and then from here, we're gonna click software and then we're gonna download the Imager version for our operating system. I'm gonna use Mac OS and then we're just gonna install this real quick and then I'm just gonna remove this because it's installed. And now we wanna choose our operating system. So the Raspberry Pi 4 is a 64-bit CPU and 64-bit is going to perform better than 32-bit. In fact, in fact, some operations are going to be up to 25% faster. The problem is the 64-bit version of the operating system is not quote-unquote stable yet. So what you'll find is if you go ahead and download one of these 64-bit versions, you might find that certain packages aren't missing, you'll encounter more bugs, and actually that was the case for me when I tried to use the Raspberry Pi camera. I noticed that a lot of the packages weren't working on 64-bit. So if you want to avoid the, those headaches, then I would go ahead and just use the stable 32-bit version of the operating system for now. In addition, in addition to that, based on what you're trying to do, you might find that you want to use a light version of the operating system. So this is Raspberry Pi Lite, and as you can see, it's 300 megabytes, whereas the full Raspberry Pi is about 10 times larger. But it's really not just the size of the operating system that is relevant to this consideration. In fact, I don't think that's even the main consideration. When you're thinking about using full versus light, the full version of Raspberry Pi is gonna come with the graphical user interface. It's gonna come with all the bells and whistles. Whereas the light version is going to remove a lot of the non-critical components of the operating system. And as a result, you're going to have less memory and resources being used to support things like the graphical user interface. So for instance, when I made 
made my video about mining Monero on my Raspberry Pi, I wanted as much of the Raspberry Pi's power as I could get. I wanted as much of the RAM and as much of the CPU as I could get so that I could max out my hash rate. Well, that might be a good case to use Raspberry Pi Lite so that I could harness more of those resources, the CPU and memory, to increase my hash rate. But for the sake of this example, we're just gonna go ahead and use the standard 32-bit. Or if you're looking to be a black hat hacker, you can download Linux Kali and use your own custom image. Okay, and now we need to choose our drive. And again, be careful here because you're gonna overwrite whatever drive you select. But this is right, this is my 32 gigabyte micro SD card, so I'm gonna go ahead and select that. Okay, and you'll notice once we select our storage, this guy comes up here. And this is the advanced configuration module. So if we click into this, this is gonna give us all the options that we need to pre-configure our Raspberry Pi. On Mac, in order to open it, you wanna use the hotkeys Control shift x and it should be the same on Google and Linux, just Google it if it's not working for you. So the goal of this menu is to set up our Raspberry Pi so that it automatically connects to our Wi-Fi network in the case that we're doing a headless connection. But even if you're not doing a headless connection, I would suggest setting this up so that we don't have to do it once our Raspberry Pi is started. So right here, this is gonna be the default host name. Let's just go ahead and keep that. You could customize this if you want to, but I don't see any reason to. We want to enable SSH, and in order to do that, it's going to ask us to set a password. The default password is Raspberry, but let's go ahead and set our own password to keep things secure. And the username is gonna be Pi, that's fine. All right, let's configure our Wi-Fi. So we're gonna select Configure Wireless LAN. This is my network name, and then I'm just gonna supply the password here. Okay, so the Wi-Fi connections are set, the country code is set, time zone is set and then we want eject media when it's finished basically once we install the operating system it's going to eject the drive so that we can pull it out of our computer without losing anything okay so this looks good to me i'm gonna go ahead and click save okay that took about five minutes and you can see we're all set now and we can also see that the card has been ejected so we can go ahead and safely remove it from our computer Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and remove this from my computer, and we're gonna pop out the micro SD card, and then we're gonna pop it into the Raspberry Pi. Okay, and then I'm gonna connect the USB-C power source. And I just flipped it on, and I can see the booting lights there. So let's start with connecting remotely via SSH. Okay, so I'm just gonna pop open a terminal here. And the first thing we wanna do is just make sure that we are able to talk to the Raspberry Pi. And we do that by running ping to the host name. So it was raspberrypi.local. And these responses here every couple seconds, ICMP, just says that the uh, device is on the network and that it's responding to ICMP traffic. So that's actually what we would expect. So we should be able to just go ahead and establish a connection over SSH. So the command for that is SSH, username, and the default username is pi, at hostname, or IP address, but the hostname is gonna be easier, uh, raspberrypi.local. All right, so this is giving me an error because I have established prior connections and the fingerprints are not matching. So the way we uh, fix that is that we're gonna go into the known host file and we're just gonna clear it out. So it spat out the uh, location. So I'm just gonna do vim, which is how you edit a text file. And I'm gonna clear these guys out, right? Those are old connections. And then I'm just gonna run the same command, sshpi at raspberrypi.local. And now it's saying we're good to go. Do we wanna establish a new fingerprint? Answer is yes. And it's gonna ask for the password that we set up in the pre-configuration menu. Okay, and now I'm in my Raspberry Pi. Right, so I can go to the root directory. So one thing I like to do when I get into the terminal is I immediately do sudo su dash. And that's gonna elevate me to a root user. And root user just gives you the ability to do anything. And I always want that ability. Um, so if I go to the home directory here, right? So, so I can go to home, I can go to pi. So, so let's go ahead and uh, connect over VNC. Now VNC, is served by a, a process that runs on the Raspberry Pi that we need to turn on. It's not enabled by default. So I'm gonna do raspi-config, and then we're gonna do interface options, and then right here, VNC. So we're gonna do VNC. Would you like to enable the service? Yes. Okay, it's saying it's enabled. Okay, and then for remote desktop to work, we also need to enable a couple other things. We're gonna go to raspi-config, and we're gonna go to display options, and we're gonna select a resolution 
We'll do the highest. Okay, and then we also want to set up desktop login. So we're gonna go to system options, and then we're going to go to boot auto login. We're gonna select uh, desktop GUI here. And it's gonna require that we reboot, so let's go ahead and do that. Okay, it looks like it's up, so let's go ahead and connect over SSH. Let's elevate to root. Okay, and then we are gonna connect using VNC. And so there are different VNC clients, right? There's remote desktop, there's team viewer, stuff like that. I use VNC viewer because it is free. So I'm gonna open VNC viewer here and it's gonna say enter a VNC server address. So I'm gonna use the IP address to continue. Okay, this is looking better. And basically now you can interact with your device as if it were, um, just a regular desktop computer, right? So one thing I would do is update the Raspberry Pi. So let's just do install updates. This can also be done from the command line using SSH. All right, so we just like installed all the packages. Yeah, let's go ahead and reboot again. We're gonna lose our connection, that's to be expected. Okay, it looks like the Raspberry Pi is back up. So let's connect over VNC again. So I should be able to just double click this here and then throw my password in here. And super quick, I know we use the IP address to connect, but you should also be able to use the host name. So I'm gonna do raspberrypi.local. Host names leverage local DNS, which sometimes needs to like update and, and get propagated. Yeah, it's giving me trouble with this. So I think my local DNS needs to clear before this is gonna work. Let's see if I can't flush my local DNS. Let's see if that helps. Boom. Okay, so yeah, you can use the host name or the IP address. And then just to quickly show you that we are in fact connected to the same device over SSH. So on the right, you're seeing the desktop, right? So I'm gonna to navigate to the desktop here and what I can do is I could create a file, right? Test, one, two, three, uh, data slayer, right? So you see the files, right? Uh, they show up on the right here and then I can go ahead and remove these uh, and you can see a take effect there, right? We now have uh, SSH over here and then we have VNC over here. And then the final way to connect would be to just physically connect our device to like a monitor, keyboard, and mouse. So I will go ahead and show you that real quick. All right, so now I just wanna show you how to set this up with real peripheral devices. I'm going to connect into this um, mini HDMI port here. And then I'm going to connect this to my monitor. So I don't know if you could do a hot connection like that. You might have to reboot the Raspberry Pi. So I'm gonna reboot the Raspberry Pi on my computer over here. And there it goes. But anyways, that's the easiest way to do it, is with just uh, real peripheral devices and then with uh, like an authentic if you like this video, then you're going to love my video showing how I created a license plate recognition system using a Raspberry Pi and a custom TensorFlow deep learning model, which you can check out right over here. Anyways, thanks for watching.